Welcome back to another episode of Building a Dynasty, and unfortunately, we did not make the playoffs. I'm not quite sure what happened, because if you look at the standings, so I don't know how we didn't make the playoffs. We were tied for first in the division. We beat Dallas, and we also beat the Eagles. So, but for whatever reason, we didn't make it. So this episode, we're basically going to start the offseason, which is bittersweet, because I did believe we were going to make it, but... Not going to hold on to it. We're going to look forward and basically get our players to the future and start next season. Anthony Swartz was four catches short of catching Cooper Cup. They just, they force fed that man the ball. Even with the 10 passes that he caught last game of the season, it just wasn't enough. But still, 133, that's a great season. He led the league in yards. Terrace Marshall was third. And Anthony and Terrace also led in touchdowns, 25 and 23, which is something I really wanted. I knew Terrace couldn't catch Cooper Cup in yards because he was having a ridiculous season in his own. But I knew we can at least break the 2,000 mark and have more touchdown passes to Cooper Cup, which I'm really proud of those guys going out there and making that happen. Good news, our contract's been extended. So Coach Ben to me is going to be here for another three years making $5 million. Uh, I mean... We're not a playoff team. I ain't going to trip on the money. But, hey, contract got extended. I mean, the ownership believes in us, and we're going to be much better next year. I can guarantee you we'll be a much better team next year. Update look at the playoff bracket. As you can see, San Francisco beat Dallas in the first round, as well as the Bears beat the Packers, and the Panthers lost to the Bucks. So the final eight teams are Eagles versus Tampa, Bears versus 49ers, Buffalo versus the Broncos, and Baltimore versus the Chargers. I just want to say for the record, we beat Philly and we beat the 49ers and we beat Dallas towards the end of the season. And we beat the Bears. Granted, that was earlier, but we beat all of these teams. So I, I it's hard for me not to say we wouldn't have been in the race for a Super Bowl because that was about our path. We would have played the 49ers first. We would have beat them because we would have replaced Dallas. If they would have played the Bears, we would have beat them. Like... It was in the cards for us to advance and knock these teams off, but uh, unfortunately it didn't happen. Conference Championship weekend, we have the 49ers facing the Bucks and the Broncos facing the Chargers. The number ones have been knocked off as well as the number two team from both divisions, so it's going to be interesting to see who makes it. If I would take a guess right now, I would say it's going to be the Chargers versus the 49ers, and the 49ers are going to win. Now we get to see which one of our guys made the Pro Bowl. Sam Howell was a Pro Bowler. He deserved it. Malik Willis was a Pro Bowler. He slid in there. Who else we got up here? Anthony Swartz obviously was a Pro Bowler. Terrace Marshall obviously was a Pro Bowler. We have any linemen make it? I don't know. I mean, these guys are really good, so it's hard to get those slots. Tristan Wirfs. Nobody from our defense made it? I feel like, okay, Amari Barno was a pro bowler. First team, too. He was he had a phenomenal season, especially as a rookie. None of our corners. None of our safeties. Obviously, our kicker didn't make it. <laughs> and then, I mean, I feel like. We had at least one DB play well, but nonetheless, I'm not going to draw on too much. We'll be better next year. We'll have better players, and the guys are going to be better. So I'm not worried about it. The fact that we did have some guys make it, though, this shows that, you know, it's, it's potential there. Play the Pro Bowl? Why the fuck would I play the Pro Bowl? Well, I got the 49ers right, but the Broncos, apparently. I just, oh, man, I can't believe the Broncos made it. They suck. But Broncos versus the 49ers in the Super Bowl. I still got the 49ers beating them because they're just that good, no matter who they got at quarterback. Yearly awards are in. Josh Allen won the MVP somehow. I, I just, I don't, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Sam Howell had the yards and the touchdowns. I guess they didn't want to give it to him because he's a rookie, but I feel like we were snubbed. Offensive player of the year obviously goes to Anthony Swartz. He just played out of his mind. Defensive player of the year goes to Amari Barno, who also played out of his mind. 
Offensive Rookie of the Year is going to go to Sam Howell. Malik was in third place. He, he had a pretty good season, too, as a rookie. But Sam Howell, I mean, he should have been MVP. The fact that he didn't get MVP is kind of crazy, but it's fine. I digress. I digress. Mari Barno, obviously Defensive Rookie of the Year. Once again, had a ridiculously great season. Best QB, Sam Howe, deservedly so. Nobody in the NFC really played better than him stats-wise besides Brady. I mean, Zeke had like 23 touchdowns, so it's hard to argue that. Although he's not that good, Madden still has him clearly rated really good, and he plays good, so he's the running back of the year. Anthony Swartz and Terrace Marshall. That makes me feel good to see. The fact that Anthony Swartz, if he did lose it, he would have lost to Terrace because the touchdowns, man, they care about those touchdowns. And the fact that Terrace had that many touchdowns and he lost to a teammate, I can live with that. They both outplayed Cooper Cup, in my opinion. Amari Barno, linebacker of the year. I mean, obviously, he had 20 sacks as a linebacker. He played great. Apparently, Troy Pryor was in the race for best DB, but he just couldn't get there. I'm not sure how many interceptions Jamel Dean had, but I don't know. I feel like my guy's a lot better than these names that's above him. Anthony Brown, the only reason I think he's up here is because of those last three interceptions he got in week 18. That's the only reason his name's even on this list. We're going to take a quick peek at who Trace went up real quick before we hop into the rest of the offseason stuff. Sam Howell is now a superstar. And he has three skill point tokens. Malik Willis trait went up. He was normal to a star, which he had a good season last year. And he was a Pro Bowl, so he definitely deserved to move up. Um, I mean, hold on. Give me a second. Let's let's do something a little different. There we go. That boy got some gloves now. <laughs> He's officially a running back. He's a running back. He's a running back converted from a quarterback. It's official. What? How is he not a superstar? He has arguably the greatest receiving season of all time. And he's only a star now? Oh, uh, that's that's disappointing. Terrace Marshall Trey also went up. He's a star now as well. Once again, I can I, I can accept Terrace a little bit being a star, but Anthony Swartz should 100 percent be a superstar. Amari Barno is officially not only is he officially an X-Factor, but he is our first X-Factor on the team. I'm not sure what ability I'm going to give him yet. I'm kind of just going to wait and see. But I'm super excited to see. I'm, I'm so excited for next season, man. We're we going to be dangerous. I'm telling you, we may be a Super Bowl contender next year. Because I know the draft is coming up, and I know we're going to hit. We're going to hit on them guys. We know two guys for sure we've been scouting their dogs. All we got to do is hit on the rest of them. And, man... It is. It's over. It's over. I'm super excited for next season. A little disappointing to see Troy Anderson didn't go up. I don't. I thought he had a really good year. I'm, I feel like he was top three in interceptions for linebackers. I mean, but unfortunately he didn't go up. But that's fine. We'll just keep working on him. Keep developing him. Leo Chanel went up a trade. He's a star now. So I don't know. I guess I don't know. I guess the sacks, man. The sacks played a big part. Looking at corners, Troy Pride trait did go up. He became a star. I mean, he had a really good season, so especially playing a slot role. So I may just move him back to outside and see what he can do. Joshua Williams also moved to a star, and this is supposed to be our guy to begin with. So the fact that he's a star now, it just shows the type of season he had. I really hate that we lost our file because he would have been a superstar, potentially superstar X Factor. The trajectory he was going on before the file got lost. As far as staff moves, we're not going to move anybody. We're going to keep the same coordinators. I mean, we haven't really invested much in them anyway. I've been really just focusing on getting Coach the enemy maxed out. But at some point, we're going to upgrade these guys. And we'll just keep going from there. But, yeah, there's no moves in our staff. Mock draft number three has officially been released. And they have Antoine Stinson going number one. And they have Chip Crane going number two to us. Which is not a bad, I mean, it's not a bad prediction. We definitely are going O-lineman heavy. So we're looking get, to get the best O-lineman available. Then down the board, we have Jamie Huntington going 14. 
I mean, if we can get him at 14, that's clearly a steal. In the center, we've been scouting Teddy Alum. We know he's a first round talent, but rejected day three. I may hold off on him. I may try to get him in the second round, opposed to getting him in the first round and see if I can snag somebody else. Because I know what he's capable of, but do these other teams know what he's capable of? I don't think so. So I, I may run the risk and draft him less later than sooner. Now we get to check out some combine results to see what these players are working with. We're gonna look at Desmond Pierce. He's one of the guys on our board. See what he did at the combine. He ran a five second 40, 13 reps on the bench, 22 inch vertical, an eight foot broad jump. I mean, he's just not athletic at all. Nico Lashley ran a 4 4 40 as a quarterback. That's really fast. He had 32 reps on the bench, so he's the strongest quarterback, 40 inch vertical. Tennis broad jump, fastest. I mean, he won the decathlon. <laughs> the fact that this FCS kid won the decathlon says something. I don't know. I might have to. Who ran the faster four than him? He ran a four four zero. So that means that means a quarterback ran a four three eight or four three something. One of these quarterbacks ran a four three something. After going through the entire list, I finally found him. Daniel Cohn ran a four three five forty. That's nuts for a quarterback. I mean, that guy may have to move position to receiver or something. He ran a 4 3 5 40. But he has the terrible throwing motion. That's why he's not on the board. He has that terrible throwing motion. No matter how fast you are, if you can't throw the ball, you can't play for us. So I was wondering why I overlooked him, but now I remember why I looked over him. If there is any more questions about this kid and what he could do, 4 4 40, I mean, it's fast. But obviously, it's not that fast compared to his peers, but. Are they doing everything that he can do? 36 inch vertical, 10 foot broad jump. But look at the quickness. 6-4-7 cone drill on a 3-8 shuttle. I mean, the quickness is ridiculous. I think if we could get him, man, that would be game changing. But I don't I don't see a world where we're able to get him. Because I'm, I'm too focused on lineman and he's not going to fall the first round. Larry Greer, the left tackle. Dancing around as a tight end. <laughs> Ran a 4 7 6 40. He had the second highest bench press with 33 reps. Somebody had more than 33 reps on bench press than him? I'm honestly shocked on that one. 34 inch vertical, 10 foot broad jump. I mean, he got some movement, man, but that is a gargantuan man playing tight end. Warmack ran a 4 5 40 as a tight end. 36 reps on the bench press. 35 inch vertical, 10 foot broad jump, 6.8 cone drill, 4.2 shuttle. I mean, he's looking like a beast. Who ran the fastest 40 to him? A 4 5 40 as a tight end is nuts. After doing some digging, I found out who it was. Jesse Gregory ran a 4 4 3 40 as a tight end. For context, one of the fastest receivers in, in this draft ran a 4-4-40. And Jesse McGregor's right, right on his tails. He had a 42-inch vertical. And he had the second fastest agility drills. I mean, this may be our guy. A tight end that fast, 4-4-3-40? That's wild. I mean, I can do a lot with that. We can do a lot with that, man. Another guy we had on our list, Stephen Young, I believe, 4-8-2-40. 16 reps on the bench, 29 is vertical. Eh, nothing really wild me. Not gonna spend too much longer looking at these combine results, but I did want to check out Will Spears, the 5-8 corner, who we all know he's gonna be an X-Factor just by his physicals. He ran a 4-3-5-40, 20 reps on bench, a 42 inch vertical. He had a 10 6 broad jump. I mean, that's just nuts. Somebody ran a faster 40 than him. That's kind of crazy, too. But I mean, he's he's just gonna be a dog, man. I just I just can't go with a 5 8 corner, but wherever he goes, he's gonna be a beast for him. So I got bored and started looking at the kickers 40. <laughs> I was just curious to what these kickers are running. And if this is it's some lineman faster than these kickers, which is kind of sad, but hey, that's not what they're here for. Are you kidding me? Scotty Rivers ran a 4-3-40. Why on earth is a kicker that fast? 
He has a 42 inch vertical, 10, 11 foot spot jump. That's crazy. I mean, is this the most athletic kicker we've ever seen? Is this destroying? That is nuts. A 4 3 0 40. All right, we're not looking at no more of these because it's, it's, I just can't fathom a kicker being that fast. He's clearly playing the wrong sport. I know we can't sign free agents, but I still like to see who's available and who's going to be out there. And the fact that we are a very popular team, we can sign Odell, we can sign Jamel Dean, we can sign Tony Pollard, we can sign basically all these guys up here want to be a commander which is so bittersweet because obviously because the rules we can't sign any of these guys but man i didn't know we had that much free agency value it is the final projection of the mock draft and the top five scenes have stayed the same thurman's going seven to jacksonville still as well as will spears going 10 to the patriots Jamie Huntington is going to us at 14. And they got us still picking Hugh at 21. I mean, oof, man. He's a free safety. I got Zion McCollum at free safety. I could always move to strong safety. I, I don't know, man. That's, ugh, that's tough. That's a tough one right there. I mean, everything looks good on paper. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to stick to what, what our game plan is. And I'd rather miss on somebody I'm not sure of instead of not taking one of the guys I know for sure are going to be home run hits. Three guys I'm going to go with for the private workout is Chip Crane because he's been high on the board all year, but do I really know if he's going to be good? Like, I'm starting to second guess myself. But he's been high on everybody's board. He was named tackle of the year. We've seen him in the uh, Senior Bowl. Jesse Gregory, because he ran a crazy 40 as a tight end. And Hugh Meadow, who also ran a crazy 40 as a safety. And he's hard on our... The mock drafts have us picking him. And I just want to see a little bit more about him. But I don't know if I want to spend that first round pick on him. Chip Crane is officially 90% scouted. And he's A in everything. A awareness, A impact blocking. A lead block, A pass block. I mean, yeah, we're taking him. <laughs> I don't know if we needed more and more confirmation than that, but we're definitely going to take him. The D injury, I think they say that about everybody because I've seen another guy who fully scouted and he said D injury. I doubt that both of those guys are going to be that bad as, as staying healthy. Hugh Meadows is starting to look more and more like a generational safety. And I don't know if I can pass up on him. Oh, I might have to see man coverage. You know we were in a lot of man. But he's a, he's a thumper. He can tackle. He can catch. He can get off the block. Or see awareness. See zone coverage. Be awareness. Excuse me. Uh, he's so good. How do you say no? Mm. This is gonna be a tough draft, you guys. I just I don't I don't know. I'm so torn right now between who to go with. With no further ado, we're going to start the draft. We're picking second. Pittsburgh is on the clock. I still think they should go and get Will Spears. He'll be a great defensive player for them, but they're not. They're going to go with... Then they're going to go with that lineman, Antoine Stinson. Yep, they want the left tackle, Antoine Stinson. We are officially on the clock. We could trade back. We could trade back. Let's see what we can get if we trade back. Now, if I was to trade back, I wouldn't want to trade back too far. I would still want to be in the top five because I believe Crane is projected top five. I don't want to run the risk of not getting him. It's not a bad trade package from Carolina. I get their sixth, their second, and their fourth. Hmm. Imagine I trade with Carolina and then they take Crane second. <laughs> that would be so heartbreaking. I think I'm going to stay pat. I think I'm going to stay pat and just take Crane. I'd rather take guys too early instead of miss out on them trying to take them later. All right, we're going to take the guy who's been high on our board all year long. 6'8", 322, Chip Crane, right tackle. 
And he's a hidden. All right. Woo, I feel a lot better. He's a hidden. All right. So we hit on our first pick. He's a hidden. Now we just got to keep hitting. Chase Moreland went to the Vikings officially. That's a bad pick. 26, 27 year old quarterback. I think we'll watch the first round and then after that we'll just start skipping our picks. John Swift went to the Texans. Tavin Hamilton. Lionel Jackson to the Falcons. He's been trying to go there all year. He goes exactly to Jacksonville. Mm. I mean, that's a great pickup for Jacksonville. They have a stud wide receiver. I'm sure he's a beast. Josh Jackson goes to the Giants. Johnny Knight, D tackle from Florida, goes to the Cardinals. Will Spears goes to the Patriots at 10. That's a steal. Will Starks, right guard. Steve Gillisley from Georgia, receiver, goes to the Dolphins. They really don't need any more receivers, but I mean, he's a pretty good one to add. I mean, I think he's really, really good, but I just, we're good at receiver. We don't. We could use another receiver, but we're not prioritizing taking one in the first round right now. Larry Greer to the Bengals. Jamie Huntington, we cannot afford to let him fall. We know what he is. We know what he's going to be. Let's go ahead and draft him. Another hit, another hidden. Big time, big time. I'm, I'm on cloud nine. I'm two for two right now. Let's see if we can keep it going. The Lions pick Nolan Roper. No clue who he is. Josh Rowland. D tackle to the Raiders. Michael Henderson, linebacker to Colorado. Linebacker to the Titans from Colorado. Carlos Warner, D tackle for the Texans now. Calvin Hastings, quarterback, Green Bay Packers. Hugh Meadows is right there at the 21st pick. I mean, he looks amazing. I don't, I don't know. I just gotta go O line, man. I gotta go O line. I gotta go get my guy. I, because I could just be drafting a fast 64 overall. I might be reaching for Teddy, but once again, we know what Teddy is. They say he's supposed to go on day three, but we know he's a round one talent for sure. So we're going to go ahead and take Teddy. Three for three on the hiddens. Dallas took the Wayne Kid. Hugh Meadows went to Kansas City. Now, if he's as good as he looked on paper, that could be terrifying. Them getting a generational safety like that. But maybe he's not a generational safety. I don't know. He looks real good at the combine. I know that much. Benjamin Claiborne, receiver, the Panthers. Josh Hunt, linebacker out of Alabama to the Bears. George Westbrook, left tackle out of Florida to the Bills. Luke Brazil, receiver out of Washington to the Eagles. Junior Royal, cornerback from Minnesota to Baltimore. Demetrius Howell, free safety from West Virginia to the Chargers. Christian Cochran, quarterback from NC State to the Bucks. Chris Norton, safety from Auburn to Seattle. Antonio Southward, running back from Florida to the Dolphins. I think the fact that Jesse ran a 4-4-3-40 is their reason we should draft him. Let's go ahead and take our tight end of the future, Jesse Gregory, welcome to the team. He's not a hidden, but he is fast as hell. 92 speed, 95 acceleration, 97 jumping as a 6'5 tight end. Eesh. I wonder what it does show us overall, but he looks good. He looks great on paper right now. Next, I think we're going to take a corner here. 6'3", 183. Rashad Gandy from Penn State. He did all right at the combine, but the fact that he's 6'3", with a 37-inch vertical, I think we're going to take him here. He looks good on paper, at least. Mm, we might have missed with him. We might have missed with him taking him in the second round. We are picking with the fourth, 
fourth round, 14th pick, I think we're going to go ahead and get Nico Lashley, the quarterback for FAMU. I mean, he looked great at the Combine. He was FCS player of the year. He was first in everything. He ran a 4-3-7 on Pro Day. Yeah, let's, let's go with Nico Lashley. Although we didn't, oh my God. 97 acceleration, 97 speed, 95. Sheesh. I mean, say how make out some competition. What is he? He's probably like a 78 or something like that. 95 throw power. Shoot, man. Say I'm in trouble. Say I'm job on the hot seat right now. Third round. The guys I really have left on my list I can wait for. So let's see if we can snag a running back here. Um, Hmm. Not quite sure what I want to look for in the running back. I guess I can't deal with a slow running back, so I should definitely find somebody with some speed. Actually, let's do that. Who has the fastest 40? Whoever has the fastest 40, we'll just draft them and see what happens. All right, so I found the two backs. Austin Cooks ran a 434 at the NFL Combine, but on Pro Day, he ran the 4-3-3, which was the second fastest. And the guy who basically flip-flopped with him was this guy, Ali Rucker, ran a 4-3-5 at the Pro Day, which was the second fastest, but at his Combine, excuse me, at his Pro Day, he ran a 4-3-2. But if you look at the measurables, Ali looks better. Let's do a side-by-side. -side. I'm gonna have him side-by-side -side and I think Ali looks better, but he's a 5'7 running back. I think the last good 5'7 running back we had was MJD. So, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm hesitant about taking a 5'7 running back. But, I mean, he had a good combine. He had a good pro day. You know what? I'm going to just... I'm just going to go with it. Because worst case scenario, we still have Malik. So if he's trash and he's just a fast guy, he can be like a three, third down running back. So we're going to go with Ali Rucker. I think we're going to go ahead and get Nico Lashley, the quarterback for FAMU. I mean, he looked great at the Combine. He was FCS player of the year. He was first in everything. He ran a 4-3-7 on Pro Day. Yeah, let's, let's go with Nico Lashley. Although we didn't, oh my God, 97 acceleration, 97 speed, 95. Sheesh. I mean, say how make out some competition. What is he? He probably like a 78 or something like that. 95 throw power. Shoot, man. Say I'm in trouble. Say, say I'm job on the hot seat right now. This is a guy I was really a fan of. Bernie Elliott, 5'10", 218 corner. Had the best bench press. He's not terribly slow. 4 for 40 was just fast. It's not slow. And uh, he's really the only cornerback left on my board that's available. All the other guys I was looking at aren't here. So I think we're going to take him with the fifth round pick. I mean, it only makes the most sense. He seems like he'll be a decent player at best. If not, then hey, it is what it is. There's a 6'6 wide receiver here who ran a 4'3", 140. And then he ran a 4-2-9-40. But his agility drills were terrible. So I'm assuming he's slow, but once he gets going, he's fast. And he's not strong at all. Seven reps on the bench press. Ugh. The vertical's crazy, though. 43-inch vertical. Yeah, that's nuts. 6'6", 184. He's thin. What's his injury? Injury F, yeah, I figured as much. Ah, George Steele, 6'6 six, six wide receiver. Because I was looking for a returner, somebody to return kicks and punts because Nathan wasn't getting the job done. Uh, I don't think George is going to be the guy because he's not elusive. I kind of want my return to be elusive and fast, not just fast. George Steele might be a steal, no pun intended, for somebody in this draft, though. This seems to be the second fastest guy available. I mean, 439 40, 4-3-4-40, that's really fast. And he also was first in the agility drills at the combine as well at the pro day. So yeah, I think Parker's gonna be our returner. 
I mean, clearly he's pretty fast, so I think it would be smart to go this route. With our last pick in the seventh round, I think we're going to go kicker here. And I was looking at Scotty Rivers since he had an amazing pro day and combine. But if you look here, his kick accuracy is F. So, I mean, and if you look at his physicals, his kick power is elite. That's the power behind it, but he's not accurate at all. So I think I'm going to pass on Scotty and go with the other guy. As hard as that may be, because he definitely looks like a crazy athlete at kicker. 42 inches vertical, and he's a kicker. But Nicholas Alvarez, he seems to be the hot first name on the board anyway. So, A kick accuracy. He also has great kick power. I mean, if he's accurate, he can get the job done. He seems to be top five in everything as far as kickers in the pro day and combine anyway. Nicholas Alvarez, welcome to the team. It's officially done. The draft has happened. And as you can see, I hit on three stars. Chip Crane is an 82. That was a stab in the dark because we didn't really recruit him until the end. So that was a stab in the dark hoping he would be amazing. Jamie Huntington, we knew he would be amazing. We scouted him out fully and everything lined up. Same with Teddy. We scouted him out fully. We knew he would be amazing. Everything lined up. Moving on to who we picked in the second round. Jesse Gregory. We took him with the second round, second pick. He's a 74 overall, but he's a 92 speed, 95 acceleration tight end. I mean, that makes him the fastest tight end in the league easily. So we got to keep an eye out for Syracuse, guys. Anybody for Syracuse, we need to look at now. Because they putting out talent like this, that's just ridiculous. Then we took Rashad Gandy in the second round. Eh, he's a fast corner, but he might not be able to get in the rotation. We'll see how everything goes. Then the third round, our only third round pick, we took another stab in the dark with Ali Rucker. He was essentially the fastest running back left on the board. I am a little skeptical with him being 5'7", 212. That's, that's real small. That is a small man. But as you can see, he has the speed to go out here and make an impact and be amazing. So we'll see how that works out. And our biggest, the biggest steal that I'm most happy about is Nico Lashley. Granted, he's a 66 overall, but 95 speed, 97 acceleration, 97 agility. I mean, the dude is going to be a freak of nature. We may even can move in the receiver. I'm not sure what he looks at receiver, but we might can move in the receiver. Then we got Bernie Elliott. We took him in the fifth round, 74 corner. That was another steal. Then we got Parker Presley. He's only here to return kicks and punts. And then, oh, Nicholas Alvarez, 77 overall kicker? So that was another steal. I mean, I think this was a great draft, honestly. This is a great draft. We got some awesome talent at it. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't say it anymore. Let's look at everybody else. Let's look at how everyone else was. Antoine Stetson was taken number one overall by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's a 73 normal. So I think it's safe to say he's a bust. I hate to say it, but he's a bust. That's a bad pick by Pittsburgh. Chase Moreland was 80? Is he hidden? Oh, he might have been a dog. But I just I didn't want to draft a 26-year-old quarterback, you guys. So that's why I just passed on him. But he looks like he may be really good. 90 throw power, 85 accuracy, 90 awareness, 82 speed, 84 acceleration. He may be a decent quarterback. But then again, he's on the Texans, and they're terrible. So... How good is he really going to be? John Swift, the 82 overall linebacker. I mean, anybody that talented was not going no lower than fifth. So I didn't really look at linebackers. All the good ones seemed like they were going to go high, and I just knew I wouldn't have a chance to get them. This is the guy I was most concerned about. Thurman Meyer is a dog. 80 overall. He went seven to Jacksonville. And, of course, he's a hidden. I wouldn't be surprised he was a superstar. Look at his stats, 95 speed, 99 acceleration, 80 catching, 99 agility as a rookie. That's crazy. 97 acceleration, 97 change of direction, 88 kick return. Yeah, he's clearly a beast. Let's look at who's the best tackler. Who do we potentially miss out on? Chris Norton, the safety. He ran a, a slow 40. I looked at that. I didn't add it, but he took a slow 40. No one really cares about that. Who's the best cover corner? 
Thurman Meyer is the best cover corner? Wait, can he play both ways? He has 92 pursuit. Can Thurman Meyer play both ways? Oh, that dude's a gem. Who's this? Will Spears, of course. <laughs> 99 return. That's just nuts. I, I gotta know. I gotta know. Can he play both ways? I'm gonna do it on camera so you guys don't. I'm not taking a peek at his trait. We're just gonna see what he does at corner. Thurman Meyer. He's a 80. He can play both ways. He's an 82 corner. He has to be an X Factor. <laughs> He's an 82, 81 corner. That's nuts. Jacksonville got a steal. Now I'm kind of regretting I didn't take him, but. Oh man, he's a beast. And then the last guy we're gonna look at what we passed on was Hugh Meadows. He went to Kansas City. He's obviously a hidden. I knew who I knew he was gonna be good. I just didn't know how good. I'm not sure what he is. He could be a star, he could be a superstar, he could be an X Factor. Either way, Kansas City got a solid player with him. He just he looks he's just oozing with potential on the paper. So they're going to be, they're going to have a player for years to come with him. I'm, I'm not even shocked, honestly. Looking at a couple more players here. JoJo Dawkins, 5'9", 195 corner. He's a hidden. 77 overall, taken in the fifth round by the Saints. So they got a steal right there with him. But 5'9", uh, corners, I'm not a fan of. Not a fan of 5'9", corners. You got to be at least 5'10", 5'11". For my liking so I understand why I overlooked them and the fastest guy to come out of the combine and the fastest guy to come out of the combine was Travis Roberts 5'7 180 wide receiver he has 98 speed 98 acceleration he, he can fly simple <laughs> simple as that he can fly and he's hidden so I'm curious what his trade is but yes this is a really good draft class a bunch of different diverse players but I'm, I'm proud of who we picked I like the guys we got on our team Sucks to be the Steelers taking Antoine Stinson with the first pick and him being trash. As far as moving guys around, I'm going to do it off camera. I'm not going to waste you guys' time with that. But the guys that do move around or change positions, I will let you know as soon as it's official or what I decide to do with everybody. And now it is officially Eric Bami's second year as head coach of the Washington Commanders. I'm thrilled with the players we got. Obviously, we got to go through preseason. We got 74, 75 players. Got to cut a lot of guys, but we got some talented players, some guys who are going to make some huge impacts. We hit on all our first round picks, so I'm astonished <laughs> and I'm shocked, but I'm super excited and happy about that. All three of the linemen we took in the first round were hidden. Not sure if they're superstars or stars, but either way, that's better than taking Antoine Stenson with the first pick. I'm not going to get over that. That was such a bad pick. Some Oh, man. That's what happened when you fire Mike Tomlin. They fire Mike Tomlin, and then they take that guy with the first pick. So, Steelers is off to a bad start. And we're going to hit the ground running. I'm going to simulate the uh, preseason. Actually, I may mess around to get to try out some of these players, see what they look like. So, I may actually see... I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to play the preseason games, see how my new players are looking. Obviously, I'm not going to record. That's going to be off camera. And with that, I think that's going to wrap up this video. I'm super excited to see what the team does. we got a lot of new faces. Uh, we're going to go through and break everyone down individually, what they're good at, what they're not good at, etc. In the next episode, this one already is getting kind of long, so I don't want it to be too long. So I'll have to run through it real quick on the new faces, the starters, the position change, and all that. So that's all I got for this one. I'm JC. How could I let you go? That's every man's fantasy. Why not do everything with you, baby girl, from A to Z? It's just you and I. Come on. Lady, will you be my baby? When I look into your eyes. Do something to me.